Jihui Vogus Falter and Ash could do the Irish Cycling Show. We've got action and interviews from throughout the world of cycling, on and off road and on the track. But today we're here at Cork Park for the Paracycling National Championships. And we're on track in Glasgow where the Irish team get their bid for glory in the 2022 Nations Cup underway. We've been speaking to team members. We also caught up with the new High Performance Director of Cycling Ireland, Ian Dyer. Coming up, we've got some great action from the Road and BMX National Series. And we've journeyed to Waterford to find out about the wonderful world of community bike rides. But first off, we're going to Ross Trevor in County Down for the Downhill Mountain Bike National Series. Warm sunshine and ideal racing conditions greeted the riders in the Ross Trevor Mountain Bike Club promoted series opener. More than 300 riders across all categories descended on the county down venue, with most of the big contingent of supporters spending at least some of the weekend at the fabled Heckler's Rock section. To the compulsory accompaniment of blade-free chainsaws, the fearless competitors plunged off the hillside with all categories producing fast times. Among the elite men, Wicklow's Ronan Don of Continental Nukeproof eclipsed the time of Enduro star Greg Callahan by over seven seconds. Chris Cumming of the promoting club improved on his own first run time by six tenths of a second to secure a podium spot, but he couldn't quite match Dunn. Dunn's time was almost two seconds faster than the first run benchmark set by last man off and pre-event favourite Jacob Dixon. In a cliffhanger finish, the local man gave the fans something to cheer about as he shaved a further seven-tenths of a second from Dunn's best to take the first round spoils. In the women's event, Gap MTB's Cat Brady set the early benchmark, which lasted until the third last rider into action, Hannah Harvey from Sperron MTB Club. Multiple national champion Leah Monsell was the penultimate rider into action, recording a blistering time, which final rider Shannon McCauley failed to eclipse. The Carrick Fergus woman nonetheless fast enough to take the runner-up spot. So a perfect start to the season for Dixon and Monsell, and the riders have plenty of time to prepare for the battles to come in the second event of the three-round series in Killarney at the end of August. From the forest to the road, the National Road Series headed to Newcastle West in County Limerick for the second round of the series, with Quibe O'Brien and Matt Taggart flying high after their success in round one. Round two of the Road National Series took place on roads already familiar from the National Road Championship and recent stage race action around Knockaderry near Newcastle West, County Limerick. Fresh from victory in the first race of the series in Carlo, Quivo O'Brien of Torelli Ashore Cayman Island Scimitar had the honour of carrying the series leader's jersey and it was clearly a responsibility she bore lightly as she stretched the field with the help of her sister Aoife. UCD's Ella Doherty won the National Junior Road Race Championship here in 2020 and she too tried her luck on a 12km circuit featuring just one short drag for 7 laps and 84 kilometres. Gabriele Gludonite is relatively new to the Irish road racing scene, but her performances have already won the respect of Quivo O'Brien as she covered a sustained effort from the Leinster rider. The high quality field remained tightly packed throughout the race. Only a final lap attack from Kira Kelly of Velo Performance opening up any daylight on the field. Kelly was clear for several kilometres, but the bunch was back together in time for a group finish in Nocaderry. Despite her attacking efforts, Quivo O'Brien still had enough to just edge a tight decision from fast-finishing juniors Erin Grace Crichton of McConvey Cycles and Emma Smith from Navan Road Club. So it was a really good race. We were off nice and early, so it was pretty chilly, but no, it was on a, a good circuit. It was a bit shorter than last year's uh, National Road Series, so um, it was kind of a bit flat with one like tiny bit of a hill, so yeah, it was good. I tried a good few attacks in it, but just nothing would stick, so I, I tried to just keep, keep going and going and going, but nothing would stick so I kind of knew on the last lap um, that I was going to come down to a finish and I know this finish pretty well because we had our nationals here a few years ago and the national road series which I came second in last year so yeah it was really good and it was nice to be consistent I won in Des Hanlon two weeks ago and then won again this week so no it was really good uh, yeah I kind of felt the mark on my back today in the race but no it's good so just hopefully I'll be able to keep up the consistency now as the road series goes ahead so two races, two wins for O'Brien, with Ella Doherty fourth, Clodany Gallagher fifth, and Clodanite sixth. O'Brien already has a commanding position in the point standings, with Ella Doherty second and Clodanite third. 
The men's race was an epic 156 kilometers over six laps of a 26 kilometer circuit with round one winner Matt Taggart of Wiv Sangod resplendent in his series leader's jersey and facing a quality field, including reigning series champion Dara Feely who missed the first round. Feely racing again with Evo Pro this season, raced clear in an early five-man move as Taggart and others bided their time behind. With Feely were teammate Liam Curley, Luke Smith from Moynalty Cycling Club, Darren McCarter from Spelman Dublin Port and Paul Kennedy from Burren CC. The series champion was keen to keep the group motivated. The five worked well together and led for almost 100 kilometres before a 12-man group, including series leader Taggart, began to make inroads. Sensing the group's resolve weakening, Feely attacked the break with around 50 kilometres to go and quickly opened a significant gap before a malfunctioning front derailleur forced the frustrated leader off the bike. While Feely persevered, Taggart, with Feely's teammate Con McDunphy in tow, overhauled the remains of the break and Mark Dowling and Gareth O'Neill also had joined the party. Just when it looked like Feely might hang on, Taggart powered up the drag inside the final kilometre, distancing McDunphy and soon putting Feely out of the race lead for the first time in almost 150 kilometres. It was a strong break, but um, there's a long way to be out there with just three or four, and I, I heard, we heard um, from the cars that they had split up and Feely was on his own with like still two laps to go or something so I knew that's a long way on, on your own so I knew if we pushed really hard behind like three or four of us um, and worked well together we'd have a good chance of catching them and um, so yeah, that's that's exactly what happened really on the, those last few drags were just sort of decisive um, I nearly feel bad to be honest we caught him with just about five or six hundred meters to go which is is uh, heartbreaking like so Tegger takes the win from McDunphy, O'Neill and Dowling with Feely a disconsolate fifth and Dean Harvey sixth. With Tegger set to miss at least one round, his commanding early points advantage could well come under threat with Conor Mernan and Gareth O'Neill best place to take advantage. From domestic road racing to international track action, I decamped to Glasgow for the first round of the Track Nations Cup, where the Irish team began the qualification campaign for the World Championships. I spoke to Ian Dyer, the new High Performance Director of Cycling Ireland and formerly a key member of the British cycling medal-winning factory over the past two decades. Uh, tell us a little bit about your role with Cycling Ireland and your hopes, dreams and aspirations. Principally, my role in the organisation is, is tasked with getting a good structure in place, um, getting good organisation in place, uh, recruiting the right people to deliver a good programme to the athletes. And with Paris and the LA Olympic Games sort of on our horizon, make sure we're in a good place to arrive at a competitive point for qualification and for actually performing at the Games itself. And tell us a bit about uh, the plan. So, relatively short cycle now to Paris. Yeah, this is a really interesting one for all the nations, really, because as we stand here now, it's two and a half years away, and qualification's already going to start next February. And so, it's important that we're immediately very focused on the, the key areas that might result in success or, or, or very good progression for us. So, on one hand, we're looking to see what we can turn around in a very short time scale for Paris. And on the other hand, we're also looking a little bit further down the track to see what's just bubbling under at the moment and, and, and could come to the boil for the LA cycle as well. So how do, you, um, how do you support the riders you've got and how do you find the new riders? Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a juggling act at the moment. So we're here at Glasgow for the Track Nations Cup and this is very much the best of the best here. Um, but by the same token, the conversations I'm having with staff are sort of centred on the other side of the equation in the more developmental areas, which is both about bringing young riders into the sport and, and the talent ID and development side of it, and also then that critical transition from being a junior athlete living at home to becoming a senior athlete and trying to bring yourself to the forefront of consideration for selection for key events. In terms of uh, short and medium term goals, you know, how many bikes in the World Championships, how many, you know, what sort of results do you anticipate from Europeans and Worlds, etc.? In, in terms of the track racing, I think from that point of view, uh, we won't be too dissimilar to how we're presenting here, I don't think. Um, there's a couple of other athletes that are out there 
um, in the program, uh, one or two injuries that are lingering, for example, that, that mean that they, they can't be racing here just now. I think we should be sort of healthy in our, our more regular strongholds like the women's team pursuit and the bunch racing. And we'll see how the sprint emerges in the coming months as well and whether we can be pe competitive in, in those disciplines also. And of course, one of the really sort of successful programs that we have on the go is the, is the Paralympic program. So off the back of the very successful Tokyo Games, um, they're already into a, a busy year. So next month in Austria and Germany with Para Road Cup, uh, World Cups, and, and that's going to go all the way through the year uh, until the conclusion in November with the uh, Track Cycling World Championships in Paris. So it's a, a big year for them, and they can look ahead to qualifying for Paris in, the, the, in 2023. I think you probably noticed I, I was focusing a little bit on the track because we're here in yeah, the yeah. Cyprus Hoy Velodrome, but, uh, but obviously you're ahead of high performance across all the programs. So, yeah. I mean, what are your hopes, dreams and aspirations for I mean, if you look at Ireland uh, as, as a nation and, uh, and the, literally the landscape, I, I have to think that surely we must be able to be competitive in, in events like mountain biking, for example, in years to come. Road racing has always been a very traditional culture, hasn't it, in, in competitive cycling in Ireland. So I think that will continue and that's something that we can, can build upon. And I hope that there's young riders out there that want to be the next Sam Bennett, for example, that we'll see in, in the future. But uh, as I look at it, I think mountain biking must offer a wealth of possibilities. So I think some of the activity that I'd like to see us doing as an organization in the years to come is, is grouping those endurance riders together and developing a multiple skill set. We're seeing in the pro road ranks now, for example, uh, uh, Olympic uh, riders from mountain bike and also events like cyclocross, crossing over and of course road also supplying track riders so I very much want to try and bring that group together in the early development stages and, and try and learn off one another and develop each other in tandem. The, the biggest link for us is inspiring a nation to ride their bikes and if you get mums and dads on bikes you get their kids on bikes and in the fullness of time those kids on bikes might want to race their bike and it doesn't matter whether they've got knobbly tires or big tires or whether they're in a skate park or bmx track to get people on bikes is really the, the actual value of us being successful so it's not really what the difference in funding might be the following year it's it's generating a legacy that inspires a nation to get on their bikes be healthy and from that our competitive riders in the future will be will be born. The she ain't a close off when Doc and Keen a tall yana of egg fern the hair and shin, and we'll hear from some of those track stars later in the show. Oxine la high cut to hain, by Tilla Action Ogan Dave in Negan Brisha. Fall turn ash to the cycling show. We've moved to Rad Oath for the first event in the BMX National Series, which is producing some spectacular moto action. But first, let's see how the riders got on at Corker Park, where they wrapped up the Paracycling National Championship weekend, and look ahead to the upcoming international programme. For the riders in the two-day National Championship event, day one was dedicated to track action at Sundrive Road in Dublin, while day two featured road racing a few kilometres away on the purpose-built circuit created by Mick Lawless at Kirky Park. For Cycling Ireland National Performance Coach Neil Delahaye, the event was a great opportunity for the paracycling community to reunite for a national event ahead of a busy international programme. And I think everyone enjoys the racing. Um, it's part of the com camaraderie, I guess, and the atmosphere that everybody knows each other from the development riders to the ones that are performing at the Paralympic Games. And there's a little bit of inspiration to be had for those coming through to have the opportunity to race with the ones they're seeing on the telly before. So for us, it's kind of, we've had a bit more um, awareness, I guess, since Tokyo there's a few more faces few new people coming in and it's just great to have them coming in to see what the level is they need to get to so the, 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 it's very special and very important for us to have the national championships where is the uh, Irish paracycling scene where is it at at the moment I think we're in a good place we don't we'd obviously like more numbers I mean we're always looking for for new talent we don't have a huge population in Ireland, so we may, might be at a little bit of disadvantage compared to some of the larger countries in that sense. But when we find and identify our riders, they come into a very well-supported environment through the development squad with the Paracycling Commission and then onwards with the, with the elite team. So we're confident we can bring them from a level through to a high level very effectively. And we have a good track record of doing that, but we, we would like to see a bit more numbers. It's always nice to see new people coming in. Rochelle Timothy and Ronan Grimes were among a number of Tokyo Paralympians relishing a rare local road and track racing outing with international assignments looming. 
I suppose for me, I'm probably looking more to the track side of things for Paris, but I'll do the road season as well and see how that goes. But really, I hope to kind of focus in a little bit more on track. I think that's where I made the most gains and that's where, where it suits me, I think, to do the pursuit and that. So I'll be putting a lot more time into that from now on. Uh, all guns blazing, I think, for, for Paris 2024. Um, this year looks busy enough, um, starting into World Cup season, so we have two World Cups um, starting from two weeks' time, following that European Championships, and then um, later on the year, some more World Cups uh, leading into road and track World Championships, so a busy, busy year. With her usual tandem partner, Eve McChrystal, unavailable on the day, Tokyo double gold medalist Katie George Dunleavy was paired with Wexford's Linda Kelly for the road race and the duo gelled well for second behind Martin Vereker and Martin Mizgajski. We've got our first international races um, coming up next week in Belgium, so it's a really good time to you know, get a racing under the belt. And um, I did a race with Linda um, today, and it was her second time on the tandem, so it was a great chance to race against the other tandems and the solo bikes there today. Very useful exercise. What's the form been like since, since Tokyo? Presumably you had a little bit of a, a rest period uh, after the, the highs of Tokyo? Yeah, I had, I had um, some time off uh, mentally, you know, physically and mentally I needed to have a break. It was my first kind of break really for, for many years. But I'm starting to see uh, the numbers come back and the form come back now. Um, I could feel it and see it a bit today as well, but um, I'm getting there and I've got racing coming up, so hopefully that will bring me on as well. I mean, our, our road championships, um, road world championships are in August and then we've got track worlds um, in October so you know that's a bit later on in the season so come hopefully there I'll be in, in form for that so this is really still getting ready for, for those races which I'm racing with Eve and of course build up for and train and build up for Paris so it's a few years of hard graft yet until we get there. Cycling isn't all about racing of course. There are many ways to get involved in bike riding and one of the most accessible and exciting is community bike rides. We travel to Waterford to talk to some of the riders that are enjoying the benefits of this great new way of cycling for fun. So community bike rides uh, started around three years ago and it's really gone from strength to strength since due to the efforts of I think our fantastic leaders that we have all over the country. So we now have over 100 leaders leading rides all over Ireland. We're here today with Declan and he's going to be leading a ride on the Waterford Greenway but there's rides like this happening all over Ireland every single week. It's a very good scheme, you know, people sign up when they're ready, they don't come on when they, when they don't want to come along, and then they come along the next week, so it's, uh, it's open to anybody, whatever sort of time they have free. I took up cycling about five years ago, and Declan was actually one of the first groups that I uh, took up the group cycling with, and it's just the highlight of coming down and meeting up with the usual faces and meeting some new people, just getting out for exercise and a bit of fresh air and a bit of headspace. That's the beauty of this, it's, it's everywhere. No matter where you are, you go and you'll hold some place you can ride up, uh, sign up and ride. Belfast, Donegal, Kerry, anywhere at all, so it's brilliant, yeah. This is my social life now, cycling once, twice, sometimes three times a week, if I have the time. It's just fantastic, love the buzz. Anyone can come along, it doesn't matter what type of bike you have, anything at all, you can show up, it's free to take part and it's really, really simple and it's a great way to get involved in your community and actually to upskill yourself in terms of your cycling and your confidence on the bike. So you can find out about what rides are available in your area from communitybikerides.ie. It's really simple to, to be able to explore the website and find out if there's solo rides happening, group rides happening all over Ireland. So it's a great way to get involved in your local community and find new routes, but it's also a great way to explore new areas with someone that's confident in, in taking you around um, on your bike. in Glasgow for the first round of the Track Nations Cup there were some very impressive performances from the Irish team not least the women's team pursuit quartet with just one international race in their legs the women's team pursuit squad of Mia Griffin Emily Kay Kelly Murphy and Alice Sharp got the week off to a great start with a new national record we started the 
the morning and we did um, a 24, I think. Um, so we just wanted to make some changes and, and, and ride the race a little better. And then, yeah, we've, we've done 21 quite a good few times. So to finally break that, to break 21 and do a 19, I think we're really happy with how it all went and, and that time that we put down. So. And Alistair, tell me it's a slow track. So tell us, I mean, how did you come up with that time here? Yeah, I guess we just tried to execute what we'd originally done in the first ride a little bit better. So I think our lines were a lot smoother and really just committing to our turns and it made for more even splits and I guess, yeah, made for the 19. Yeah, exceptional stuff, Kelly. Um, you know, was, was sub 420 what you were, was it a big goal for you? Yeah, so we had planned for, to do a quicker time like this at Worlds back in October and we made a couple of changes this time that would aid us. So we've got new bikes, bigger gears and um, we haven't really had the training time that we were after but it's just pure dogginess I think at the end of the day you've just got to trust your training and you know, just got to smash it. trust your teammates know what they're going to do and yeah commit it sounds like a short amount of time but when it's in pedal strokes and you, when you're already on your limit it's big like now an exceptional effort and Mia uh, same quartet that held the old Irish record you presumably knew this was in you What's next after this? I think next we really want to ride a few seconds faster. And I think we want to try and bridge the gap to those teams that are like up there in the top four. And I think we're really capable of that. And that's what we want to strive to do. Finally this month, let's take in some of the thrills and spills and great racing action from the first two rounds of the BMX National Series here in Ototh. Okay, riders, random start. Riders. Ready, one, Ratoth BMX Club played host to the first two rounds of the BMX National Series since the first COVID outbreak two years ago. And a suitably large entry from clubs from all over the country enjoyed warm weather and spectacular racing at the Mead venue. For event organiser Eugene Jackson, the big turnout, the glorious weather and the quality of the racing throughout the age groups suggests rude good health in the sport right now. Yeah, it's been good. We had 30, 125 riders yesterday and we're down to 130 today. So excellent, uh, excellent numbers for our first national back. We're looking to build on that now. We have Lisburn here, we have Belfast, Cork, uh, we've got Cork Town of course, yeah. So uh, yeah, we're doing really well. Yeah, so the numbers and the age group is brilliant. Like we had 30 riders in the 11 to 12s, and we had 21 riders 9 to 10. So that's what we want. Like we want young young boys and girls on their bikes, on the saddles, and pedaling around this track in a safe environment. There were plenty of high points in a busy weekend, and among the standout performances, Lisburn-based Argentinian Tommy Magnanat held off Matthew Campbell in the first round of the always spectacular Superclass but Campbell from the Ratoth Club took his revenge on day two. Among the girls' classes, Abigail Foran from the local club took the female 7-10 to 10 honours on both days, holding off Juno Foran on day one and Sammy Hughes in round two. The most popular class was the male 11-12s, to 12s, where Ratoth's Alex Neville fended off Lisburn's Freddie James Simmons and Belfast rider Jamie Harron on day one. Neville prevailed again on day two from Harren and Lucan's Shimon Precek. Well, that's it for this month. We'll have loads of great bike action for you again in next month's episode. Biggie Lane on Visha Hogan, Slán Tamil.